Hello guys, how are you? Hopefully everyone's doing great. First of all, I would like to uh, thank you everyone for all of the very nice wishes that we got uh, to all of the community, of course, uh, yesterday uh, in the Diwali day. And um, yeah, I mean, it's one of our most uh, or fastest view uh, videos. So uh, hopefully you guys like the content, but also the celebration, right? It's, it's always important to celebrate uh, important and very cool traditions like that one. And yeah. Um, Today, today I'm really, really, really excited because I'm going to be showing you some uh, something that I consider to be very important information that not a lot of uh, students know about, um, and that is how to be a little bit more fast in creating assets that you don't necessarily create yourself. So what's that mean? I'm going to tell you. Um, we're going to be exploring something called STLs. So some of you guys know, uh, because you're into 3D printing, that STL is a very, like, universal format that people use to share files uh, through the internet and the STLs one of the cool things about the STLs is that they they tend to be quite easy to um, to move from one software to the other and ZBrush actually has this thing called the STL or sorry the 3d print hub which is what you were normally used to print stuff and, and get things ready for 3D printing, right? So ZBrush is a very powerful tool. And, and one of the things that I've been using it quite a bit in the last uh, couple of years is 3D printing. I personally use it for hobby, not as a, as a, as a work or as a job, um, but I've been using it quite a bit too, to print stuff. And I want to show you some of the things here because this is very, very important. And in order to do this, I'm actually going to go to one of the most famous pages for uh, STL files, which is a Thingiverse. Now, Thingiverse is this uh, like community-driven um, page that you are able to go into and download as many STLs as you want. Some of them are a little bit more oriented towards like um, FDM printing, the, the filament printing, because they tend to be bigger. But there's some very nice like STL things that are meant to be for like resin printing. So one of the things that I want to show you about this is a lot of times when you're working a job, you're gonna be on a hurry, like. Things are going to be or have to be delivered like very fast or, or very efficiently. And even though you might have these skills to do it yourself, there's nothing wrong in the production side of things to utilize a mesh that you didn't do yourself and, and optimize it or do whatever you need to do to, to make it work, right? The only important thing, and this is super important, I, I don't want any of you guys getting in trouble. You need to make sure that whatever file you're trying to use has the proper um, licensing that you want. So for instance, this one right here, as you can see, has the CC attribution share alike 3.0 on ported, which means that you are free to copy and redistribute the material in any media or format, adapt it, remix, transform, build upon the material, even commercially. This is super important. You need to make sure that the license that you're, or, or how you're getting your object has the proper license for you to make money out of it. Um, as long as you give, in this case, appropriate credit to whoever did this. And if you um, if you share this, you need to make sure that you're sharing it under the same license. So that means that if I were to, let's say, download this thing, which I'm going to do right now. Let's download it. If I download this thing and I want to do like some sort of like weird like carvings and stuff on the skull, and then I want to distribute it, I can't distrib distribute it commercially because since it was given free, I need to distribute it free. I could sell it though. Um, like if, if some client asks me, hey, can you do this? Make a very nice like carving on the sculpture, print it and then sell it to me. Yeah, that's fine. But you can't you can't just sell this because someone's already giving it to you for free. So there's a lot of things in regards to licensing uh, that you always need to be very mindful of, especially with this kind of objects. You're going to find some objects. I remember taking a look at this guy right here. And this one does not have a, a, a commercial. So... Uh, okay, no, this one does have, so, but there are some of them that will have, like, you can use it for your own good, but you can't distribute, like, for instance, Groot, right? Like, you would think that because this guy is right here that you're, you are going to be able to just, like, download it, print as many as you want, and then start selling them. I mean, no one's stopping you from doing that, except that you might get, a, uh, like, a lawsuit from Disney because that's their property, right? That character is, is property of Disney, and uh, you are not free to do it. You can, do, you can uh, do it for your own purposes. If you're not going to be making any money and you're just going to be printing them, gifting them to your friends, painting them for fun, you're totally fine. Though. You're totally in the clear. That's no problem, but you, not, you cannot use this for commercial purposes, okay? 
Uh, if you guys want, we can have a talk about uh, like uh, licensing later on. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys are interested in, because it's a, it's a, it's one of those topics that we're not really taught as artists, and until you're out there on the on the job market, uh, you're gonna understand how that works. So usually these STL files, you'll have this sort of like folder. Let me just drop it here. Clean desktop, right? <laughs> I've had a mess of a desktop for a long while, and you can see that we have this guys right here. So the base, the savers, and the skull. So if we go into ZBrush now and we say import STL file, we are gonna be able to go into the desktop, grab our files, and grab this skull. There we go. We can read it, and it's just as any other subtool that you would expect to have here inside of ZBrush. The only problem is the only problem, or there, I mean, there's a couple of problems with this sort of meshes, but they they tend to be decimated that's that's one of the first things that you're going to notice so you might notice that the objects are going to be decimated and if you want to do like some cool carvings and stuff it might be a little bit difficult so let me show you my approach on how i would clean this up to convert it back into something that works if you have a very strong computer if you have a lot of ram memory and you can afford it uh then one very easy way to do it is just go into geometry dynamesh and just have a nice enough resolution let's try like 700 and dynamish, not enough. Oh. Dynamish. And there you go. So at 700, you can see that we're almost at a million polygons. And we were able to keep pretty much all of the detail, right? Like, of course, there's a little bit of like uh, pixelation here. But with 700, again, I'm not sure what. There we go. With 700, we are, we're pretty, pretty much in the clear. So we're going to be able to, again, carves things up, right? So I can just go here. Let's say I turn on my symmetry. Well, here's another thing. STLs tend to be like not oriented properly, which is uh, it's a bummer. So I'm going to go W and I am going to snap this to the front and then snap this like this. And I think we're almost there. Wait, no, nope. let me go back. Ah. Let's go here, here. Oh. Let's go here. So you can see the little like human head. So this is my my top view so let's rotate this there we go and then we should be able to rotate this like this and that should be my front view i'm not sure why this is not updating okay that's that's supposed to be the front view so let's just there we go so we can go do something like that and that's fine we're gonna be inner front view okay so and the reason why we need that of course is if we want to use uh dynamic or symmetry so let's say we want to carve like we want to do like this very nice like uh tribal carving right so again we, we go into dynamesh we say 700 we hit dynamesh and now we are back in, in dynamesh so we're gonna be able to use all of the traditional tools that we know and like uh instead of zbrush to create this sort of thing and we can you remember that the trick that we did for the for the armor like we could do stuff like that like in this case i'm just adding this now as you can see the object is not symmetrical like not perfectly symmetrical uh so that means that we might not have the exact same detail everywhere but you you're free to do whatever you want even i mean if you want to change things up like if you want to change the proportions because you're creating like a demon or a monster or whatever like i can adapt this thing and, and create my own creature like let's say i'm gonna use my snake hook snake hook and then i just start creating like this very weird like horns right there smooth them out let's push this guys uh just a little bit out there we go and then maybe maybe like a like a horn here like a kind of like a rhino thing so you're free to do this and again as you saw in the license you can modify and adapt this thing as uh, as much as you want i need to check don't, don't quote me on this i need you to check whether or not you would be allowed to like create a character and use like this specific parts. I think you could because on the on the license it says that you can adapt it. So technically adapting it with a character might be uh, something like that. However, if I were to do a video game and I create like a demon and let's say I do the whole body, but I'm just using this skull as the face because I really like the skull and I would really want to have this sort of thing. I, I would definitely need to find a way to to credit the artist uh, in the credits of my game or like with a with a private message or something like you would definitely need to find a way to to make sure they knew um, that you are using their uh, their elements and you're adapting them to your work. So again, be very careful with license because one of the worst things that can happen to you as an artist is to uh, get a lawsuit, for instance, because that's, those are really expensive. I've never gotten one. Hopefully, I will never will. Uh, and also, since the artist community is so close, uh, I mean, it's 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 a very small community in general compared to other careers your name can get burnt out or can get like a very bad reputation very, very fast. So you don't want to be that guy that plagiarizes things and 
uh, and does like weird stuff. So in this case, if I were to make like a render for my portfolio, I would, I would definitely have to say this is based on this model and I only did some modifications, right? Which would be completely valid. Anyone with a half a, half a brain would be able to go into the, into the site, into the link that I, I need to provide. And they will see that, uh, of course, I didn't do really much, right? I just added like this cute little horns and, and that's it. So, so you're not going to fool anyone. Like you're not going to be able to fool uh, a studio or like a, like a professional artist into thinking that you are this good. If you are not at this level, just because you were able to modify some, um, some STLs. Um, but it's definitely one skill that you need to understand that it's, it's, it's completely, completely, um, what's the worth? Um, it's completely valid as long as you follow the rules again, the, the licensing rules. So there you go. So you can see we were able to adapt this, um, where is it? This very nice saber tooth uh, character into this like demon like element, like this thing right here became this thing right here. And we can do a lot of things. I sometimes like using this things to practice. So I would get like a model that I want to like analyze, download it, try to re-sculpt something, try to texture it, try to UV, try to retopologize. For instance, if you're practicing retopology, it's a great exercise to download one of these files, bring it into Maya and try to retopologize it for a like a game ready prop. And, and you're totally fine. Like you're, you're adapting the work and, and that one, like the low poly, you can actually use in your portfolio and say, hey, I know how to do your low polys. I know how to do bakes. I know how to texture. I didn't do this particular model, but I just want to show my skills. That's perfectly valid and you're super free to do it. Now, one very important thing here is uh, talking about the DSTL things for those of you who are into 3D printing. Remember that you have this thing, which is the size of the element. Right now, this is 25 millimeters. I know, uh, I think in India, you guys use, uh, because again, most of the audience is from India, Not I'm not <laughs> discriminating and, and against anyone else. Um, but I think everyone uses um, the traditional like metric system. Uh, I do know that in, in America or in the United, in the United States, they, they use the, the uh, imperial system, I believe it's called. Um, we use uh, millimeters, so this tells me that this is 25 uh, or 2.5 centimeters. So that's going to be like really small. If I want to export this so that it's a little bit bigger, then I would need to update it here and say, hey, you know what? This guy's going to be, let's say, uh, 50, so 5 centimeters. So 50, 50, and 50, and I'm going to say update size ratios. Uh, and I'm going to say my object right now is like this small. And now it's going to be like this. So 14, uh, 40 millimeters, which is about 14 centimeters, and it's going to be a lot, a lot better. Uh, now to just export the STL, I'm going to export this, let's call this Demon Skull. And if you're into 3D printing, you know that you need to bring this into uh, different sorts of uh, softwares. The one that I use because I have an Elego Mars, a uh, first generation Elego Mars, it's a very old machine by today's standards. Uh, you're going to be bringing your STL right here. So I'm going to go here. Let's go to our files. And this is the little... Um, element that we use. So here I would say like, okay, yeah, this is, this is great, but it's way, way too big for my printer because that's the, that's the printer is so I wouldn't be able to print this on my specific printer, but if I reduce this by 50, uh, I might be able to, to fit it in by rotating it slightly. And here you, of course, like place your supports, get everything ready. And that's a whole different story, but the 3d print hub right here, another really cool thing that it has is this thing right here, which is check mesh volume. And it will say, Hey, you know what there, if your object is not a solid, it will let you know that it's not solid, of course. But if you have an, a solid object like this, say this cylinder right here, let me make it a polymesh 3D. And if I say check uh, mesh volume, it will say you're going to have 6.24 cubic millimeters. Why is this important? Because again, for uh, measurement purposes, for material purposes, uh, it would be very, very necessary. I think, I think I have, let me see if I have them here. Because I worked a couple of years ago with a guy here in Mexico uh, that was doing some jewelry. Jewelry is one of those things that ZBrush uh, sometimes gets used for. And, uh, well, not sometimes, quite a bit, to be honest. And I did a, a couple of works. I think it was 2019. Let me see. I have, I have, I have, I have ah, if I have the files. Because when you're 3D printing, that's something that's a little bit tricky to do in ZBrush. It's not impossible. It's a little bit tricky. You need to make sure that you're using the proper uh, sizes. So you always want to make sure that you're using the proper sizes. Was it 2018? Couldn't have been. When was this? It wasn't. Oh yeah, it was 2020. Death rings. There we go. There we go. So this guy wanted to have like this super creepy elements. This one I did sculpt from from scratch, and uh, or no, actually I think I used the same method that I'm explaining right now. Yeah, I remember actually going into into Thingiverse and and downloading one skull. I might be able to find the exact one that I used. It's this one. 
it's it's a variation of this one because it had like the missing teeth and, and yeah I re now i remember i went in here i downloaded one of those that had like the proper uh like information and stuff and i adapted it to this ring right here you can see his logo over there uh, all of this sculpture was mine and uh and then i sent this for 3d printing let me see if we can check the batch volume here no, we can't. And the reason why we can't is because it, it has a lot of holes. So there's not like a complete piece. Like the holes that we have there is going to make it a little bit difficult. Um, but the size and everything, this is the tool that you're going to be able to, or do you want that you want to use for 3D printing. So that's it, guys. Just a quick little uh, update on the on the on one of these capabilities, a little uh, technique there for you. So you don't always need to model from scratch. Sometimes in production, it's completely valid to, to take an, an object and... Um, um, and retooling it or adapting it to whatever you wanna or you need to do, and uh, again, as long as you follow the proper rules in the in the in the licenses, you're gonna be just fine. Uh, that's it for today. Tomorrow, super excited about this. We have our first uh, weekend or portfolio review weekend for this month. It's gonna be uh, portfolio review three and four. Uh, so yeah, thank you to everyone who submitted. You're gonna see your work uh, being showcased here in the channel. And uh, yeah, you know the drill: like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye, guys.